Right. Uh, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so it's nice to see a bunch of familiar faces again. <laughs> so right. Um, let me just take this opportunity to introduce myself. So my name is Kin, and I'm the founder of Casatria. So basically, we have the privilege of representing Google as their only premium partner in APAC, handling their data platforms and their marketing automation suite. Okay. So um, in a nutshell. Every month, we track more than 20 billion individual transactions across seven countries. Okay? And we are also a recipient of a technology innovation grant, about a million dollars. Okay? So we actually specialize in an area called digital hyper-profiling. And we use this to fuel commercial outcomes for the brands that we serve. Okay? So in a nutshell, uh, in the next few minutes, I'll be sharing techniques that your brand may want to consider if, let's say, you want to put the odds in the favor of the companies that you work with. So um, there's a lot of products here, which I probably uh, Apologies for the slight technical issue. Right. So anyway, uh, in a nutshell, um, basically when we work with brands, there are three basic processes that we typically undergo in terms of what we call a life cycle. We are literally paid hundreds and thousands of dollars every year to handle something called compliance, okay? Meaning that I'm sure all of you work for different companies and uh, most of the time your management expects to be able to hear how well you did in the last few weeks. So this means that you actually need to generate a report, okay? So in order to be able to report on what has happened, you need to be able to describe what has transpired, okay? So this is the first step. So Typically, uh, most brands uh, nowadays are not satisfied with that. They will typically say something like this. Bro, uh, you've been working with us for the last few years, uh, and I, I'm sure that you've noticed that there are certain trends that seem to repeat whenever a particular phenomena is present. In an ideal situation, if you wanted to add value for my organization, I want you to be able to assess risks and opportunities that you think my organization will face so that we are able to be in a better position, okay? Then some brands would be even more aggressive. They say something like this. Bro, you've gone all the way to share with me some risks and opportunities, but um, if you really wanted to add value to my organization, you should be sharing with me options I can consider so that I'm able to game the scenario and improve the odds of finding a favorable outcome, okay? Then once we actually hit a few success stories, most of the time it will result in a promotion. Okay? So then the customer will come over and say, bro, we had a good run, you know, and thank you for our success story. I've gotten a promotion. But as I've climbed up the corporate ladder, it seems as though I've got better things to do right now. Can you help me automate what we've done in the past? So this is when we actually need to consider turning into things like artificial intelligence and machine learning so that you can actually scale all of these initiatives and drive these outcomes across all of your business units. So in a nutshell, um, let me just share the use case. Uh. I think it is quite clear that e-commerce is here to stay. Trillions of dollars are literally being generated across mobile platforms and web platforms that allow you to buy and sell. Okay? And one of the things that you will probably observe is the fact that out of 100 people who come to a website or an app, only two or three will decide to buy. Okay. From wow, <laughs> so from banks, wow, this is really wow. Okay, from banks, telcos, uh, even people who actually run airlines, you know. So this thing is not isolated, yeah. So let me just share with you a very simple proposition. Uh. In the past, right, when a million people came to any of these assets represented by a telco, okay, usually. The person who decides what you see, right, is the administrator or someone 
uh, or rather someone called the person handling the content management system. Okay? This guy will decide with the marketing team what you should decide to see. And the problem here is this. Out of the thousands or millions of people who arrive, right, each person who arrives tends to have a different problem that they want to address. The first person out there, he's looking for a deal for the latest Xiaomi. Another person over there, he's looking for a solution that will allow him to monitor his child and his mate while he's at home. And this gentleman over here at the bottom, he's looking for an answer. If I'm planning to port from a different telco, what is the, going to be the benefit if I decide to switch to you? Okay? And then there's one bro over there, looks quite well to do. He's looking for high-speed internet for his new bungalow. Of all the things that you see on the screen, right? It so happened that the middle element there was really talking about high-speed broadband. Lah. And it so happened to match his interest. This is a one out of four chance of you potentially hitting based on the millions of people that you're literally attracting. Okay? So again, this is a challenge right, that is being faced by all brands who decide to go online. Okay? So in order to game the solution, I will need to introduce to you three very simple metrics. Lah, okay? So since we're all Malaysians, right, I'll probably talk about a topic that all of us probably find close to our heart. Everyone familiar with the term called roti canai, right? Fair enough. Okay, good. So let's assume that right now I'm a chubby mama. Okay? My garai, right? In one day, my shop, there's about 100 people walking past my garai. This means that my reach, right, is 100. Out of the 100 people who walk past, right, let's say... Only 20 of them are interested in roti canai. This means that uh, my, my relevance is 20%. Okay? And out of that 20 people who are interested in roti canai, only 5 of them decided to buy. So this means that my conversion rate is 5%. Okay? So traditionally, most companies would try to game the system. And the first number they would try to game is something called reach. Okay? So let's assume that uh, I approach uh, Kisiak, who actually runs Exabytes. Okay? Let's assume that he runs a marketing firm now, and I work with him, and he says something like this. Bro, if you work with Exabytes, I'm going to make sure that more people know about your garai selling roti canai. Okay? So yesterday, only 100 people walked past, right? After working with Exabytes, it seems as though I attracted 1,000 people instead. So this means that I had a 10x increase in the total number of footfall in front of my store. If all the numbers were the same, right, with a relevance of 20%, yesterday only 20 people were interested in Roti Chanai, but today, there are now 200 people interested in Roti Chanai. Yesterday, only 5 people decided to buy, but because I have a 10x increase in my reach, it seems as though today I will probably get 50 purchases as far as Roti Chanai is concerned. So, once start, you start doing this, um, you get into the habit of spending a lot of money to acquire what we call footfall. But then, some marketers will say, is there a smarter way of doing this? This is where you start gaming the second number, which is called relevance. What if I told you, right, that based on the 100 people who walk past my garai, actually, 80% of them preferred to drink something called teh tarik. Okay? So if I shared with you this piece of information and you chose not to do anything about it, we will just smile about it and just have a puff of smoke later. Lah. Okay? But nowadays, right, I think because times are tough, most of us would actually not, not do anything. <laughs> okay? We would take the information into account and intentionally change our product mix to reflect the interest from the ground to make sure that we have the odds in our favor. So this methodology is basically what I'll be sharing in the next few minutes. So in a nutshell, how does this work? So I'll just share with you the vision. Huh? In the past, when a million people came to this telco's website, one million people will see the exact same thing. But now, we can actually identify what we call profiles in real time. Let's just assume that this is a family unit with children. We will crunch with statistical certainty to deliver the most suitable narrative to make sure that we're able to identify products and services that will allow these people to meet their challenges in life. If you now notice that the behavior has changed, it now seems as though it's a student. He's looking for a deal, looking for a cheap phone, trying to find out how you can actually complement his lifestyle. The narrative that we put forward, right, needs to evolve based on the kind of people that we are encountering across our assets. Your ability to respond and change the experience will drive your bottom line. 
Okay? If you choose to ignore this, then you have to live with the current results that your company is getting. But if you choose to intervene based on what we call intelligence, you will literally change the game. So, um, as a representative of Google, there are basically three main questions that they want you to ask. Okay? As someone who attracts millions of people across your asset, the first question that you want to ask here is this. For each person who arrives, what kind of problem you think they face? Number two, based on the problems that are being faced, what kind of product or service that you feel can address their challenge? And number three, sometimes the same problem can be addressed through multiple solutions. Which one should you recommend as a company to help the organization make more money? If you can answer questions like this, right, the way you play the game will start to change. Right? Okay? So actually, the telco network right, is actually very rich. Uh, I won't go into too much details, but I'll just explain very quickly. Um, I'm just going to borrow my phone here. Okay. So actually, your phone, right, the moment it enters the network, it will broadcast a special number called an IMA number. With this, you can identify the brand, the make, and the model. So let me just paraphrase. Uh. If we notice that in the last six years, right, this gentleman always seemed to be holding an iOS device, and it seems as though every 24 months, right, he would decide to upgrade to a new phone. So three months before he decides to upgrade, right, what kind of phone should you show? Would you show him a Huawei phone? Would you push him a Xiaomi phone? Or would you recommend the latest iOS device that meets his preferences based on his past experience. Okay? So if we had data, the way you play the game will start to change. And I think, uh, as alluded to by the earlier speaker, many organizations have the information. It's just that they choose not to consume it in their day-to-day -day interactions. Okay? So if you decide to take advantage of these data points, again, the way you choose to interact and engage and decide to even strategize your engagements will start to evolve. So in a nutshell, uh, I'll just share with you rough architecture. Lah, huh? um, so I, I know it might be a bit hard to see. This green part here, right? In the past, it used to be called a data warehouse. Huh? But now the sexy term is something called a data lake. For those of you who have been deploying cloud infrastructure re recently, all of this lifting and shifting, right, are alluding to data points. So uh, for us, you want to typically be able to onboard user journeys and behavior across your websites and apps. So different people will be using different analytics tools. The most popular analytics tool in the world is something called Google Analytics. How many of you are familiar with this platform? Okay, so a fair bit. Okay. So on top of this, um, by observing the user's behavior, you also want to be able to know what kind of products you have available. Okay? Some people have invested in a CRM. Like I think earlier, the speaker from HubSpot, HubSpot, by the way, has an interesting free component, which is their CRM, which is made available for you at no cost. Then you also want to be able to capture interactions across all the campaigns that you're running. Some of you may be advertising on Facebook. Some of you will advertise on Google Search. Some of you will actually do direct buys with a publisher of your choice. This is non-exhaustive. Okay? Some of you run a lot of your inbound marketing activities, which is alluding to email. And some of you have actually on-ground activities as well. So long story short, this is still a data mining exercise. You typically need to pull the information out, normalize it, and dump it somewhere. But there are actually three questions that you typically want to be able to ask. Number one, when someone arrives on your website or app, can I guess what they are looking for? Number two, based on what they are looking for, do I have the right kind of product or service that can address their challenge? And number three, can I assess which one will be the most profitable option for my company? Once you do this, you are then required to assemble what we call creative assets that will reflect an experience. I know this sounds a bit complicated. I will show you the example a bit later. Okay? But once you start doing this, you can then choose to deliver this across your website, your app, or even through email. So before going too far, I'll just share with you just a very simple example. This is something called an audience matrix. Okay? Uh, for those of you who do marketing or sales, sometimes you will go into a meeting where your boss will say, can you define who we are planning to target? And based on who we are targeting, can we assign a product that we feel can address their challenge? This is just a super simple version. Huh? 
So for example, if this was a telco, one segment is called family with children. There's a bunch of phones available together with the cost. Then there's a profit margin and you have the total number of inventory available. Okay? So you could have done this for students, professionals, uh, multinational companies, government and so forth. Uh. There's a whole list of products that you can match. Uh. Okay? So once you start doing this, what we want to be able to avoid is where when we plan one particular option and force it down the throat of all our customers. This is traditionally what will happen. For example, recently we had Raya. We would usually have a festive greeting. Then we talk about our most popular product, which is on season, and then maybe a value-added service that was recently announced. This is traditional. Huh? But now, in an ideal situation, if we were already planning to prepare a variation to support families with children, or even a student looking for budget offerings, okay? We then need to be able to bind this with relevant products and services, okay? Some people will pre-prepare all of this in advance to make sure that they are able to respond in a timely manner. So, how does this typically work? For example, if this was a particular creative, right? If I knew that it was a family unit with children, this element would immediately change. If I noticed that this person was actually looking to find a solution where he could communicate with his family at a lower cost, that's exactly the narrative that we will need to evolve. And we, if we notice that he's also interested in wholesome content for his entire family, we will then continuously adapt based on our visibility of his intention. So, in order to do this, actually you will realize that, uh, okay, maybe I paraphrase this. How many of you have built websites before? Good. How many of you are familiar with a content management system? How many of you have built brochures or even sent out emails for marketing? All of you have done all these things before, right? So, most of the time, in order to determine what is shown, right, you usually have a library of what we call creative assets, okay? So, what happens here is this. You actually have a lot of different options. The question here is this. In any touch point, right, there's usually what we call a template, okay? So, this template, right, involves one big banner and three small slots. So, although you could have a thousand different creatives, right, which one do you show? right now, to this person, okay? That is the question that we actually need to ask. Last time, what people would do is, uh, based on research, it seems as though 70% of our clients are Muslim. Let's share a Hari Raya message instead. Lah. Boom. Oh, it seems as though the most popular product is an iPhone. Uh, let's just talk about our iPhone on promotion. Lah. Boom. So if this person, for example, was an uh, Indian gentleman who was Christian, right? Is Hari Raya relevant to this person? Not really. If this person, for example, was a Xiaomi fan and you pitched to him an iPhone, do you think he would buy? Not really, right? So, the one-size-fit-all is not effective, okay? And if we want to be able to respond, we need to start asking the right questions. Huh? So, once you start assembling all of this, you typically need to be able to deliver it across multiple four factors. All of these things, right, would change what you choose to assemble in real time. Let me just share with you a very simple example. Um, I will jump into this a bit later. Okay, I'll show you a simple demo. Okay, give me a moment. So I will drag this across the screen to make it easier. So for all of us who do designs, right, um, you'll probably be familiar with the fact that everything is built with what we call layers. Okay, so everyone familiar with this, huh? Okay, wonderful. So right now, what happens here is this. Let's just assume that um, I'm going to listen to three data points. Huh? One is a preference for language. I'm going to support something called English and Malay at the moment. Lah. This could be more. Lah, huh? Then I can also detect what kind of phone you are currently using and I can detect what kind of phone you, you actually wanted to buy, okay? So let me just jump and show you the demo lah, very, very quickly. Okay. Okay, so this one clearly is a one-size-fit-all kind of situation. It's currently in Malay, and it's trying to pitch you to buy a Galaxy Note 9 lah, okay? So what happens here is this. If we captured all the data points, right, we are now able to intervene the payload in real time. Let's just assume that I now realize that you prefer to be engaged in English. 
it seems as though, uh, let me just check the options here. It seems as though your old phone is an iPhone 4. Okay. And it seems as though you are planning to upgrade to an iPhone XR. Okay. Okay, I'm doing this manually for you. Uh. Mind you, when it happens in real time, right? Uh, all this happens through something called a web service. Uh, okay, so uh, hopefully my internet's okay. So once we actually push all of these data signals across, right? We then change the narrative in real time. You see, earlier it was in Malay, now it's in English. Because I detected an iPhone 4 earlier, and I knew you were planning to upgrade to an iPhone XR, we intentionally tailor what you choose to see based on your preference. Okay. So whether you choose to do this as an advertisement, whether you choose to do this on your website, whether you choose to do this on your email marketing platform, right? It's largely immaterial. Okay? The process didn't change. Hopefully this part makes sense. Okay, cool. Right, so uh, let's go to the magic parts. Lah, huh? So the main question that most people will typically ask now is, how do you know? How do you know that this person was planning to buy an iPhone? How do you know that this person was actually a Xiaomi fan? So let me just introduce to you a new field of science. It's called kinesics. Okay, you can actually Google it up later. It's basically a study of human behavior. And based on the behavior, we can actually predict what they're going to do next. Traditionally, actually our parents were very familiar with this term. But it used to be called something else. Uh, it used to be called body language. Okay? So now this is the more sexy term. Lah. Okay. So before I go too far, I'll just explain very, very quickly. Lah. Let's just assume that uh, I went out with this uh, with Nicole behind over there. Okay? And I noticed that whenever she flipped through the menu, whenever she sees dishes that have meat and are greasy in nature, she flips through very quickly. But well, whenever she sees things like salads, fruits and juices, she spends more time looking at it. Okay? So my boss, right, let's assume like I'm the waiter for the restaurant. Huh? My boss told me that our signature dish is our greasy chicken chop. Okay? And it's the hottest selling item in our menu. So if I followed what my boss told me to do, right, which is to recommend the chicken chop, the lady sitting in front of me will probably not order. Okay? But most of us are humans. We are able to make a judgment call. Okay? We're not going to say something like this. Because I want my company to earn, I will ignore what my boss told me. I would recommend instead our salad on promotion and also our wide variety of juices that are also on discount for her consideration to maximize the odds in our favor. So as humans, right, we do this every day subconsciously without thinking about it. Okay? So whatever a machine can do, a human needs to be able to set the tone and manifest. If you agree that this is the right thing to do, then the machine should repeat it. So this is the basic premise. Huh? So in order for this to work, we actually need to be able to capture what we call digital fingerprints that are left behind by our customers. So to show you what happens, uh, let me just show you a very simple demo. Give me a moment. Ta-da. Okay, I'm going to shrink this. Okay, so basically what happens here is this. Uh, this is a sample site for a telco. Actually, when you choose to interact with any element, right, it's actually throwing what we call a data model or a signal. Uh, to make this clearer, I'm just going to show you what happens. Uh. This looks like a disease at the moment, but it's actually not. <laughs> it's actually interactions that are left behind by any individual across any of your assets. So for example, when you click on this particular object, it is representing an Apple device, an iPhone 7, and there seems to be a cost. This thing, right, is actually the same data point that was entered by your bro handling the content management system. Okay. The problem here is this. Most of the time, while all these things were entered in the platform, it is rarely pushed into the analytics solution. This is a disconnect. Okay. This is why the reports that you get right, are always talking about how many people came, how much time was spent, but you don't know what they were looking at. Okay, so what happens here is this. We then take it one step further. What we actually want to be able to do is change the narrative. So in the past, right, traditionally your marketing 
team member will say something like this. Oh, bro, in the last 30 seconds, right, we received 500,000 interactions across our website. Honestly, if you shared that kind of story, right, uh, most people will stare at you blankly because they're not sure what to do. What happens here is this. You want to be able to categorize all of those interactions in real time into data models that you can understand. So out of the 500,000 interactions, some of them represented interest in an iOS device. Some of them were representing an interest in an Android device. But that's not good enough. I actually want to know who's interested in the Galaxy Note 9. I want to know who's interested in the Huawei Mate 10. By knowing all these nuances, right, you are in a better position to understand what has transpired so that even you yourself know what you should do next. This is very, very important. And in an ideal situation, you actually want to be able to isolate the behavior of an individual. While it is important to know what everyone else is doing, I care more about what Jessica is looking for right now because she is the one that I'm serving today. Okay? So when you want to be able to do personalization, knowing what each individual prefers allows you to change the game. And this is very, very important. So once you start doing this, uh, let me just jump back. Oh, sorry, wrong. Ah, okay, yeah, sure. So in a nutshell, what happens? Assuming you follow all of our best practices, actually, uh, each time someone comes to your website or app, Google will assign you a unique ID. Okay? So if you click on one of these individuals, right, we can actually reveal to you their entire click stream. I know it's a bit hard to see. I'll just read it out for you. At 3.45, this person landed on the homepage. Then after that, he was looking for virtualization solutions. Okay? He was also looking for a lease line. He was looking up options on how the telco can assist to enable disaster recovery to be present. Okay? And he was looking for case studies and also looking for options that he can consider to empower his mobile workforce. So in a nutshell, by being able to plot behavior over time, we have effectively built something called a customer journey. One of the outcomes of observing this is building something called a customer profile. So just for example, this gentleman called Jack, he's interested in a data plan. It seems as though based on his behavior, he was toying with the idea of considering to buy an iPhone or a Xiaomi device. He was also considering to check out accessories that would match, and he was also perhaps considering to buy a drone. So based on this behavior, right, we can actually already assess that this person is likely being represented by a person who is facing a phase of life as a student. Okay? So Jack is actually very different from Angel. She, on the other hand, she's looking for high availability solutions. She's looking for fleet management offerings and solutions that will empower her team to be mobile. She looks as though she's representing a company. The way you pitch to a student, right, and someone who represents a few million dollar budget needs to obviously evolve. Okay? So it sounds like common sense. Problem is, your websites don't reflect common sense at the moment. Your apps don't reflect this. Okay? So if we want to be able to deliver better results for the companies that we work with, we all need to step up and change the game, okay? Okay, it's a bit small, a bit hard to see. Uh, anyway, these are just examples of different audience categories that you can consider. Uh, maybe I'll just jump into one. Lah. One of the things that telcos can quickly get, right, is the ability to differentiate whether or not you're a migrant worker or someone who is local. So someone who's a migrant worker usually has a few set of challenges which are common they work very hard in Malaysia and they want to send money back home. Okay? These people also miss their families. Okay? And they also miss their culture. They want to be entertained from the content that they are used to obtaining in their country. So they actually want to stream stuff from back home. So if you were able to ascertain all of these characteristics, you can then help other businesses game the situation by providing them intelligence. You can choose to use this internally to fuel your own sales and revenue, but if you choose to use this to allow other brands to drive better outcomes, you can now generate what we call ancillary income. So let me just share with you in a nutshell how this will work. Just an example. Okay? So assuming that we are monitoring a profile, typically there are a few things that you want to be able to calculate. 
So there's something called lifetime value, which is a combination of what you have currently earned together with how much they are projected to obtain, assuming they continue to become your customer. Then you also want to be able to know how much they are currently spending. Over the last three months, has there been a net increase in the amount being spent? You also want to be able to identify, based on the kind of things that they're looking at, what are the motivations behind their purchase behavior. So once you start doing all of this, if you have the discipline, right, you end up building something called an audience graph. So if you speak to people from Facebook, right, they will tell you that they actually have something called a social graph. They can calculate the relationship between person A and person B. Google has something called a device graph. They can tell you, based on the kind of service that you're attempting to use, what kind of machine you're using to access it. So an audience graph, right, is a very fancy term of saying that you have visibility on what you think they want to buy. So very quickly, for example, if this one was devices, right, knowing that someone was interested in a Samsung device, a Huawei device, or a Xiaomi device, or a Nokia device, is obviously better than just knowing that he wanted to buy a phone. Lah. If you knew that he preferred, for example, a 512 gig phone, right, versus one that only had 32 gig, that also matters. So the deeper you go, right, the higher the likelihood of you being able to match what they prefer. So in terms of things like value-added services, knowing that this person was interested to send money overseas, knowing that this person was interested in roaming, knowing that this person wanted to keep his ID anonymous whenever he made calls, all these things will appeal to different stakeholders within the organization. Then if you're talking about the type of customer, knowing that this person was a student, a person who is working with a company, someone who is currently married with children, all these things are, again, different nuances that will help you plan more effectively. This is not exhaustive. Lah. This could be really, really deep, but I just jump through very quickly. So once you start doing all of this, you now actually have intellectual property. This intellectual property represented by your audience graph, right, can then be immediately exported across multiple Google touch points. You can choose to push this for your search engine marketing. So if, for example, earlier I was running my Roti Chanai store, right? Now I can actually say things like this. People interested in Roti Telo who prefer it together with sugar, okay? I can now choose to push this audience, right? And pitch to them directly on the search engine. I can pitch to them when they are reading an article on the star. I can pitch to them whenever they are actually considering even arriving on my website before they decide to make an order. Okay, I can intentionally choreograph what they see. So this is very, very important because once you start doing this, you have effectively used information to put the odds in your favor. Stuff that in the past, most people have always used data purely for the generation of reports. And this is a disconnect between the commercial outcome that you want versus the process required to make it a reality. So, um, okay, I'm just gonna show you a very simple demo. Just give me a moment. We just drag this across the screen. Uh, this smaller. Smaller. Gosh, so big. Sorry. Okay, so roughly can see lah. Uh, okay, make it smaller a bit. Ching. Okay, so this is a sample data set, right, that I have already joined for uh, a different player, they are a mobile operator, okay? So I've joined uh, what we call customer information, billing information, all the way to behavior expressed across websites and apps. Huh? So now we can actually ask questions like this. First question I'm gonna ask is, uh, show me high net worth customers. And I'm gonna qualify that as anyone who spend more than 100 USD a month, roughly, lah, my hand tune a bit. I can now sort them based on the kind of services that they consume, and uh, immediately I will have visibility. See, in the past, right, if you're part of the marketing team, you will usually make decisions based on something called intuition. It's a very polite way of saying it's an educated guess. Okay? 
But let's just assume that this is a data set, right, that comes from Wangsa Maju, okay? So if I'm part of the marketing team, right, let's just assume that I'm planning to open up a booth. I'm actually now empowered to do homework, you see. It seems as though based on the data, there's a lot of interest in chatting services. So what do I do? I will partner with people like WhatsApp, WeChat, or even Viber to make sure that when someone comes to my booth, right, I can talk about things that they prefer so that I can now intervene and tell them why they need to upgrade their data plan to improve their lifestyle. Let's just assume that someone from Samsung hears about it. He gets really excited. He'll say something like this. Well, bro, I'm launching a new phone. It's called the Note 11. I can see this device selling like hotcakes across all your events. Clearly, he is trying to fish for a JV, right? In a large company like a mobile operator, nothing will move without a contract being signed. Okay? So just before he signs, right, his boss calls him all the way from Korea. Lah. Then you get a conversation like this. Wow, you've been very hardworking of late. Lah. Huh, thank you, boss. But um, I noticed you're negotiating with a new partner. Huh? Before you sign, can you ask them a few questions? Huh? Sure, boss. What should I ask? Well, based on their existing customer base, whom amongst their clientele do you think may actually want to consider switching to a Samsung device? Well, oh, his boss right, is asking what we call a qualifying question. In the past, you throw this back to the telco, right? They wouldn't know how to answer you. But again, as a data scientist, actually, again, whenever the phone enters the network, it will broadcast a number called an IMA number. With this, I can identify brand, make, and model. So what does this mean? It means that in real time, right, I can actually focus on people who are holding an Android device within my network. Why? Because these people have a higher propensity to churn to a new device. So as I set this criteria, the visibility changes. Earlier, we have interest in chat, but now it seems as though there's a fair bit of interest in music. And this is why this particular player is considering a partnership together with people like Spotify, and even rekindling negotiations with people like Warner and Universal to cater to this interest. So let's say now the last provider is a dating app player. He walks into the room and he says, bro, I'm actually the leader in the market. But you know what? I usually charge everyone one, but I'm actually willing to give it to you for free. Wow, for free. Ah. Let's sign. Let's do the partnership. Well, uh, just hold your horses. Hear me out. So as alluded to earlier, we're actually a regional player. Okay? And what we observe is the fact that when the ladies are given access for free, the gentlemen are more than willing to pay. So, while I don't mind giving it to you for free, I'm only going to make it freely available to the ladies, okay? Because we are a for-profit organization and we want to squeeze blood out of the rock. Ah. Okay, fair enough. Let's just check it out. So, how many ladies do you have on the list? So, again, as you set different criteria, the visibility changes. Earlier, we have interest in chat. Then, we have interest in music. But now, it seems as though there's a lot of interest in religion. Being a Malaysian, right, it does not take a genius to share with you that most of the sisters here will be Muslim. Okay? So knowing this nuance, what do we do next? We will probably need to change the offering. We will probably need to partner with people who offer things like Surau Finders or even change the dating app to reflect something called Sharia compliant boyfriends to enable our sisters, yeah, seriously, to find companionship with people who are able to understand the tenets of their faith. Because well, seriously, it's an important thing. So some things we take for granted because we don't have information to back it up. Okay? But when the data stares at your face, right, you now have a choice to make. Do you want to ignore it? Or do you choose to step up and use the information to put the odds in your favor? Okay? So this, in a nutshell, is the paradigm that we are sharing with you. Um, we typically do this for most of the brands that you probably interact with every day. We work with banks, airlines, telcos, e-commerce companies, and media companies. But the principles remain the same. So hopefully this has been useful for some of you, and hopefully that you can actually take this back to your organizations and influence the change that you want to see. Thank you.